Hi, my name is Rick Raspi. I'm Bee Specialist at the University of Nebraska. Today I'd like to talk about dry lotting beef cows and pricing feeds that could be used in rations for cows that are being dry lotted. There's been a lot of interest in dry lotting beef cows recently. One of the questions that I get from producers is, I have a set of feeds that will fit into my feeding system. Which feeds are the best buy? Remember, any ration for cattle is going to be composed of energy, protein, vitamins, and minerals. And really, the major part of that ration is going to be composed of energy. So we can actually use a pricing system where we can price feeds on a cost or price per pound of nutrient basis or cost per pound of TDM basis. And I'll show you that here in a few minutes. When you compare feeds on a cost per nutrient basis, it goes further than just comparing feeds on a unit basis. What I mean by that is that uh, it goes beyond comparing feeds on a cost per ton basis, a cost per hundred weight basis, or even a cost per pound basis. It allows you to compare feeds on a price per nutrient basis. So in other words, on a price per pound of TDN or price per pound of crude protein. It also allows you to compare feeds, or it is important that you compare feeds at the same moisture content. So typically what we do in this situation is that we compare feeds, all feeds, at 100% dry matter basis. So what's needed to do this type of pricing system? Locate feeds that fit into your feeding system. Gather price, okay? That would be the first thing that you do. Also, you're going to have to have some type of nutrient analysis of the feeds that you're going to compare. So you need to uh, gather nutrient information. If it's forages, you need to have a forage analysis. Make sure that that forage analysis has at least crude protein, energy in the form of TDM, and also the moisture content or the dry matter content. If you're buying a feed that might come in a bag or a bag feed, uh, we'll use the nutrient analysis that's on the feed tag. It may not have a dry matter content on the feed tag, but most feeds in a, that are bagged, I would assume or at least assume that that dry matter content would be about 90%. Byproduct feeds, uh, the plants that you buy those feeds from typically would have a nutrient analysis. In the case of distillers grains, now, which is a commonly used feed in the Midwest here, uh, get the moisture content of that feed stuff from the plant. Typically, we'll use a 30% crude protein for the distiller's grains. And then our data would say that the book value for TDN of distiller's grains isn't right. Our experiments would suggest that the TDN content of distiller's grains is going to be somewhere between 108 and 100% and 110% TDN. So I would use those TDN values instead of book values. So this is a good example of where you would have a feed that's the same feed that has the same nutrient analysis but is sold at different moisture contents. So in the first column I have dry distillers grains. It's typically sold at 90% at dry matter, 10% moisture. Then you have modified distillers grains, which is 50% dry matter, 50% moisture. And then wet distillers grains that's typically sold at 35% dry matter and that would mean at 65% moisture. So all those feeds in the middle column there would be priced differently on a per ton basis. And so the only difference in these feeds, again, is the moisture content. So in that third column, basically what I did is I calculated those three feedstuffs at 100% dry matter basis. So to get the stillish grains to a price on 100% dry matter basis, you take price divided by dry matter content. So in this case, I took $180 divided by 0.9, which is the dry matter content of the stillage grains, and got $200.88 per ton of dry distillage grains at 100% dry matter basis. Went through the same calculation for modified distillage grains, and then the same calculation for wet distillage grains, $70 per ton divided by 0.35, which is the dry matter content of the wet distillers grains and got $200 per ton of, at 100% dry matter basis. That would be the cost of wet distillers grains. So this is the way that you would, would figure out the price of these feeds that are the same feed, same nutrient profile, but they're sold at different moisture contents. So this is the equation that uh, we would use to calculate 
uh, value of feed on a cost per nutrient basis. And what I have here in the numerator, I would have the price of the feed, and then in the denominator is the amount of nutrient purchased in that feed at 100% dry matter basis. I'll give you an example here using this uh, formula here in the next slide. When they use it, when they use this uh, calculation, it prices these feeds on a per nutrient basis at 100% dry matter. So moisture is eliminated from the from the from the uh, comparison factor because they're all at 100% dry matter. It doesn't consider labor that would be needed to deliver the feed. Also, when you calculate uh, the feed using this equation, it doesn't include shrink or feed processing. So shrink would mean that I buy a ton of feed, but by the time that I get to feed it, I don't have a ton of feed, the same uh, ton of feed that I purchased. It would be something less poundage-wise because I lost something, some of that feed from the time that I purchased it to the time that I, that I feed it or the, by the time that I put it in the mixer away from the feed. An example of feed processing would be grinding. You have forages that you're going to feed uh, through a, a mixer wagon. Uh, this pricing system does not include uh, feed processing. So here's the equation in practice. And so what I would like to do here is I have two feeds. I have silage, price of $38 a ton, 70% TDM, 45% dry matter. And I have corn that would fit into a feeding system. Uh, for dry cows, and the corn price is $3.80 per bushel. I converted that to price per ton, so it's $136 per ton. It's 90% TDN and 85% dry matter. What I would like to do is compare these two feeds. I'm buying them both as a source of energy to be included in the diet. So I'm going to calculate and determine the cost per pound of energy basis. So doing the corn silage first, in the numerator here, I have $38 per ton. And then in the denominator, this first equation that I, that I calculate, 2,000 times 0.35, would basically determine the amount of dry matter that I push, purchased in a ton of corn silage. So when you take 2,000 times 0.35, you get 700 pounds of dry matter purchased. So you purchase 700 pounds of dry matter. And that means you purchase 1,300 pounds of water, because 1,300 plus 700 adds up to a ton. When I take that times 0.7, which is the TDN content of corn silage, I purchase, in that ton of corn silage, 490 pounds of TDN. So the next part I need to do is I calculate uh, price or cost per pound of TDN, so $38 per ton divided by 490 pounds of TDN, that calculates out to 7.8 cents per pound of TDN. So the cost or the price of uh, corn silage on a nutrient basis or TDN basis is 7.8 cents per pound of TDN. I do the same calculations for corn. I have $136 per ton, which is the price of corn. The first calculation basically tells me the amount of dry matter that I purchased. I'm going to take 2,000 times 0 0.85. 0 0.85 is the dry matter content of corn. That means I purchased 1,700 pounds of dry matter. I take that time 0.9, which is the TDN value of corn. That means that I purchased 1,530 pounds of TDN in that ton of corn. If I take $136 per ton divided by $1,530 pounds of TDN, and it gives me 8.9 cents per pound of TDN. So the cost of corn on a per pound of TDN basis is 8.9 cents. So in this particular scenario, the best buy is corn silage because I can I can buy it at 7.8 pounds or 8 cents per pound of TDN as compared to corn in regards to 8.9 cents per pound of TDN. So here's just a, a set of feeds that I could, uh, that I could uh, use in a dry lot cow diet. And I price those feeds 
uh, three fifty uh, bushel for corn, five percent shrink. I price the stillers grains at either a hundred percent or eighty six percent the price of corn, and then synergy, which is a feed that sixty percent modified the stillers grains, forty percent uh, corn gluten feed, um, and a hundred percent the price of corn. All of those at five percent shrink. Uh, here would be some forages, uh, straw, alfalfa hay, and grass hay at different prices and 10% shrink. And then I have corn silage here, which would be another energy source, $35 a ton, 35% dry matter, 15% shrink. These are the energy values that I used on those feeds, 83% TBN for corn. We know from research data that uh, when you feed corn in high forage diets is that the TBN content isn't 90%. It's more like 82 to 84%, so I used 83%. These would be the energy values for uh, distillers grains. Uh, the energy value for synergy is 98%. And then the energy value for corn stalks is 12.43. Uh, energy value for alfalfa hay, 55. Grass hay at 53% TDN. And then 70% TDN for the corn size. I went ahead and used those numbers to calculate the price per pound of TDN at the bump for each of those feeds. So these would be the energy feeds, and it appears that the best buy based on the prices that I put in and the TDN content is the stillage grains at 5.8 cents per pound of TDN. Forage-wise, it looks like the best buy would be uh, corn stock or straw after accounting for shrink and grinding. Uh, the cost per pound of TDN for the straw or stocks is 9.3 cents per pound of TDN. On our beef website, beef.unl.edu, at the top of the home page, uh, the navigator bar, uh, there's one that says learning modules, apps, and webinars. And uh, we do have uh, an app that will go through the calculations. It's called a feed cost calculator app. You can download it onto an iPhone or to a Droid. And it will go through the calculations for you if you put in the numbers that it asks for. The other thing is, is that we also have a calculation uh, Excel spreadsheet can, that can be downloaded onto your computer. If you have Excel, it goes through the same type of process in regards to calculations that, that we just went through.